all right so i've had a bit of a break after i finished the uh iranian f14 tomcat and the trumpeter 132nd f4u1d and i've sort of just been thinking of what i'm going to work on next and i'm also looking at starting to do some builds for the uh, competition I enter in which is QMHE in Queensland Australia and uh, I'm going to start working on some builds for that for next year for 2024 and first one off the rank I'm going to do is Tamiya's F4B Phantom uh, some of the categories in the competition uh, for so you have the 148 and you have out of box pretty much is the category so you can't use aftermarket uh, items for that category and even if the kit comes with uh, say it came with something photo etch then it wouldn't count as uh, the single media so it wouldn't be just plastic, it has photo etch in the kit. But this kit has no photo etch and no resin. So I'm going to use that as an entry. And this kit comes with some very nice uh, markings, the squadrons including it. But I'm going to go with some aftermarket from Furball. Now, when I just said aftermarket items, decals are allowed so you can use decals just not uh, enhance the model with resin or photo etch so I'm not still not decided which scheme I will do but I'm leaning towards this one with the white tail but I'll see how I go so we got the call outs for these That's the actual decal sheet from Furball. That. So the aircraft numbers, Marines, and then we got the the uh, squadron markings. So they're all quite nice, nicely done as you would expect for Furball. Also, my other reasoning for using those decals is Tamiya decals can be quite thick and difficult to uh, get to settle down so yeah so I'm not I haven't really looked into all that yet what scheme to start the build before I worry about that so I haven't or I have looked at the kit a little bit I've never really Huge one to one scale call out for your decals and stencil data. That's the midway stencil data on the back. And you got uh, Coral C won this one, and the other one was Sundowners, I think. Yeah, so the Sundowners, and that's your out of box. Markings. I quite like that one, but with the eagle claw on the landing gear doors. But also, it's something different. Most will build them out of the box and use the kit decals. I like to go different sometimes and do something no one else is doing. So I haven't removed any of the plastic to have a really good look at it, but it is Tamiya, so I can't expect there'll be any issues. So I'm going to start on that one, and hopefully I might get the first part up today. Uh, and while I'm working on that, another build I'm going to do for competition is... Also Tamiya. I think I was a Tamiya fanboy, but I'm not. But 
This one is uh, 135, the KV2. Again, the armor category is in 135. You can have uh, single media and multi-media enhanced. So this one's going to be the same. No aftermarket, single media. And again, I haven't really looked at this one either. So you got two schemes in the box. One's the Russian, which is the Fulvia green. And you've got a captured one with winter wash captured by the Germans. Uh, I'll be just doing the Russian one. I do like the winter wash, but then I want to do German markings. So this kit, again, Tamir shouldn't be any issues. Uh, your tracks are molded in lengths and sections, just the corners that you'll, the round bits that'll be single parts. It's even got the sag molded into the track. There is figures included, so I'll probably have a crack at building those and painting them up. Not that I'm any good at it, but there you go. And also I've started a uh, scratching an itch. Every now and then I like to do a ship. It's a bit out of left field. I am not a ship modeler, however I do enjoy them and it's uh, challenging myself to do something different and I find them quite fun. I've started this one, so it's not nothing exciting, it's just the Liberty ship, but it's, uh, I've always found it appealing. So I've started, I've got the hull together, I've sanded the uh, seam line out of it. So there's three sections, got the upper section, uh, midsection and then this kit has an option of you put the flat the uh, flat bottom the waterline version or you got the full hull version I did the full hull version but I'm also doing this to have a go at making an ocean base so you have a crack at that uh, something I haven't done before I have done it with the waterline series this is this will be my third ship build i've done two waterline series and i used uh i think it was like vallejo's acrylic water medium just to I did like i basically just sat it on wood and did water effects of that but this time i'm going to try something different i'm going to use a foam base cut out the shape of the hull so it sits in i'm going to use clay to mold the ocean and then airbrush it and paint it in and then do some effects with that. I've uh, always wanted to give it a go and you know, cheap kit, something to give it a go on. So I'm looking forward to that. And also I have in the mail, hopefully, I ordered them over a week ago. I've got the, uh, I'll be inserting the image here, the Magic Factory 148 F4U 1A2 dual combo box that's hopefully in the mail as we speak and also uh, Eddard's limited edition SU25K the Frogfoot uh, I had built that it's the uh, I guess it's Zvezda's kit they've used for their boxing I've, I had built that kit it's not too bad and it's got some schemes in there I quite like. So I'm happy to do another build of that. So I'm excited to see that one too. That should be hopefully getting here in the next week or so and then I'll do a review of that. And I'll hopefully I get a bit of time though I might put up a review as well today. So that's where I'm at at the moment.